Um, so I want to dive in here with the Ukraine story today. Um, tensions continuing to rise. The United States pretending that Russia is the sole aggressor. Um, Jen Psaki insisting at press conferences that Russia is the aggressor and that they are simply responding. Um, and Ned Price had a rather humiliating interview with um, Matt Lee of the Associated Press, who who really kind of actually pushed him, did some good journalism and pushed him on the claims that Russia was going to engage in a false flag and that Russia was doing all sorts of aggression. Um, and Ned Price seemed kind of stunned that the media was unwilling to simply play stenographer for power as they usually are. Typically, anything that the Pentagon or the State Department says simply gets repeated and regurgitated on these mainstream outlets as though it is fact with no proof required. Uh, look back to WMDs for a perfect example. Um, so Ned Price kind of got destroyed. I'm going to show you guys that that uh, a, a clip of that in, in just a second here. Um, but for those who haven't kept up with kind of the basics, the United States has sent troops to the east. They are not in the Ukraine, but we've sent troops to the east. 3,000 of them was the last number that I saw. Um, and uh, French President Emmanuel Macron has been in talks with Putin, apparently is going to meet with Putin tomorrow, has been on the phone with him a few times uh, here recently. So there are negotiations underway, and Macron has been saying that he wants to de-escalate but the United States continuing to sort of escalate the situation, quite frankly, um, by sending troops and by arming neo-Nazis in the Ukraine, etc. Um, and all of this, of course, stemming from, for anyone who might not know the background, I guess I'm kind of assuming that everybody has kept up on the background, but uh, since 1990, James Baker, who was then uh, Secretary of State, promised uh, the Russians that NATO would not move, the quote was one inch east, okay? Now the United States says that was never a, a set in stone promise, that it was something said in a negotiation type of a thing. The Russians took it as a promise, obviously, because it sure kind of sounds like a fucking promise. Um, and uh, since then, we have violated that on a number of occasions with other countries entering NATO. And now the, the obvious controversy is over Ukraine and whether they would enter NATO. So what Russia wants is for us to keep our word and not continue the aggression of moving NATO to the east. All that we need to say here is we, you know, we don't need Ukraine to enter NATO, uh, but we will not say that. It's no skin off our back to say we will not have Ukraine enter NATO. Um, we support their independence, but we're not going to have them enter NATO. There's no skin off our back in saying that, uh, but we refuse to give an inch on this and continue instead to escalate and and throw fuel on the fire, so to say, uh, of the whole situation. So that's kind of the, the very basic background. Of course, it's a lot more nuanced and complicated and deep than that, but that's kind of the, the basics of the start of this whole controversy. Um, and the cause for all of these negotiations and talks and tensions. Ned Price, as I mentioned, was pressed by Matt Lee on this um, and, and had a rather embarrassing showing. Matt Lee, huge shout out to him at the Associated Press, because this is what we need more from journalism, or from journalists rather, excuse me. Um, we don't have a whole lot of this, unfortunately, as you all have probably noted through the foreign policy coverage of the last couple of decades. Um, so this is that clip. And I show, I wanted to show you guys the long clip here. It's about five minutes long. It's not just the short interaction. It's the whole thing. And it, it's rather contentious and embarrassing for Ned Price. Good on Matt Lee. We'll watch it come back and discuss. I'll pull there. Um, so you said actions such as these suggest otherwise, suggest meaning that they suggest they're not interested in talks and they're going to go ahead with some kind of a... What action are you talking about? One, the actions I've just pointed to. Uh, the what fact, action? What? The, the fact that Russia continues to engage uh, in disinformation well, uh, campaigns. You know, you've made an allegation that they might do that. Have they actually done it? Uh, what we know, Matt, is what we what I have just said, that they have engaged in this activity, well, uh, in this planning well, activity. Well, but, activity. But let me let me because because obviously this is not this is not the first time we've made uh, these reports public. You'll remember that just a few well, weeks I, ago. I'm sorry, you, made, made, made what report public? If you'll let me finish, I will okay. tell you what report we made okay. public. Uh, we told you a few weeks ago that we have information indicating Russia also has already prepositioned a group of operatives to conduct a false flag operation in eastern Ukraine. So that, Matt, to your question, is an action that Russia has already well, taken. It's an action that you say that they have taken, but you have shown no evidence to, 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 to confirm that. And I'm going to get to the next question here, which is, what is the evidence that they, I mean, this is like crisis actors, really? This is like Alex Jones territory you're getting into now. Um, 
what evidence do you have to support the idea that there is some propaganda film in the in in the making? Matt, this is derived uh, from information known to the U.S. government, intelligence information that we have declassified. I think you well, know. Okay, well, where where is it? Where where is this information? It is intelligence information that we have declassified. Well, where is it? Where is the declassified information? I just delivered it. But, no, you made a series of allegations and would statements. You, would you like us to print it out the topper? Because you will see a transcript of this briefing that you can print out for that, yourself. That's not evidence, Ned. That's you saying it. That's not evidence. I'm sorry. <laughs> what would you like, Matt? I, I would like to see some proof that you that 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 that, that, that you can show that that. Matt, you have that, been that, that shows you, that 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 you, shows that the Russians are doing this. Ned, I've been doing this for. A I long know that time. was my point. As, you you as have you, know. you you have been doing this for quite a while. You know I that have. when we declassify intelligence That's information, right. and I we do so in, in a means. In we do and so. I, and, we do so with an eye to that, protecting that sources Kabul and methods. Is not going to fall. I, I remember a lot of things. So where, where where is the declassified information other than you coming out here and saying? Matt, I'm sorry you don't like the format, uh, but we have declassified. It's not the format; it's the content. I'm it's, sorry you don't like the content. I'm sorry you. I'm sorry like you are doubting this. the information that is in the possession of the U.S. government. No, I, I, what I'm telling you is that this is information that's available to us. We are making it available to you uh, in order uh, for a couple reasons. One is to attempt to deter the Russians from going ahead with this activity. Two, in the event we're not able to do that, in the event the Russians do go ahead with this, to make it clear as day, to lay bare the fact that this has always been an attempt on the part of the Russian Federation to fabricate a pretext. Yeah, but you don't have any any evidence to back it up other than what you're saying. It's like you're saying, we think we, we, we have information the Russians may do this, but you won't tell us what the information well, is. That, and then when, when, that, when you're that, asked... That, that is the idea behind when, deterrence, Matt. When, when, that is the idea behind asked, deterrence. And when it is asked, our hope that the Russians don't go forward with this. when you're asked what the information is, you say, I just gave it to you. But that, that's not what... You, you seem not to not understand... You seem not to no, understand no, no, the that, idea of deterrence. Understand. We are you trying to not deter to the, the Russians of... from moving forward with this type of activity. That is why we're making it public today. If the Russians don't go forward with this, that is not... Uh, ipso facto, an indication that they never had plans to do so. Uh, but then it's unprovable. <laughs> I mean, my God, what is the evidence that you have that suggests that, that, that the Russians are even planning this? Matt, you, I mean, I'm not you, saying that they're not, but you just come out and say this and expect us just to, to, to believe it without you showing a shred of evidence that it's actually true. Other than when I ask, or when anyone else asked, what's the information? You said, well, I just gave it to you, which was just you making a statement. Matt, you said yourself, you've been in this business for quite a long time. You know that when we make information, uh, intelligence information public, we do so uh, in, a, in a way that protects sensitive sources and methods. You also know that we do so, we declassify information only when we're confident in that information. Yeah, you if you doubt, if you doubt the, the credibility of the US government, of the British government, uh, of other governments and want to uh, you know, find uh, solace in information that uh, the Russians solace? are putting out. Uh, that is uh, <laughs> that is for to, you to do. I'm not asking what, what the Russian government is putting out. And, and what, do you mean, what is it supposed to be? Video because US officials are describing uh, very specific scenes, but do they actually have a video? The, the fact that we are able to go into such great detail, uh, obviously I'm not going to spell out what is in our possession, but I will leave uh, I will leave it to you. Uh, I will leave that to your uh, to your judgment. That, your that, there are no facts that you've spelled out. Coming days. Do you have evidence this was intended to come out in the coming days? We've we've said Ben for some time now that the Russians uh, have positioned forces. Uh, they have undertaken preparations. That if Putin decides to move forward with an invasion, uh, they're positioned to do so. You they are poised to do so in the coming days. I mean, is that a timeline that you? It just, it, they're so shameless, you guys. It's, they fall back on this assumption of credulity that they just don't have or deserve and that nobody gives them, rightly so. So they, they just make this assumption of you have, to, you have to accept everything we say as though it's fact or truth. Um, and a lot of authorities, a lot of institutions tend to do this. Police departments do this, the Pentagon, the State Department, et cetera. And then media just regurgitates it as fact and cites like some general or some State Department, you know, as though that person is entirely objective as a source, right? Um, 
it's it's unbelievable. They just expect us to believe it. After, as Matt mentioned, W he said, I remember WMDs and I remember that Cobble wasn't gonna fall. Like he, you, you know, he, 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 you can't just make this claim when when the U.S. government has such a consistent history of lying about this shit. How many times has the intelligence community lied in in some major scandal, Bay of Pigs, or, or all these examples? Right, WMDs being quite recent um, as a justification to go into another war. So and and to accuse the Russians of a false flag, like listen, guys, I'm not saying that Putin's above doing a false flag. That's not my point at all. But for the United States to accuse anyone of a false flag is grossly hypocritical. I mean, it's rank hypocrisy. We've been, we've we've openly engaged in false flags on a number of occasions, right? It's, it's it, we come from this position of moral superiority that we neither deserve nor are viewed with, and 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 that's what makes the whole thing so laughable. But usually, reporters will not press them like that. So good on Matt Lee from the Associated Press for for putting the the pressure on, you know. Because their justifications are just completely hollow. They're just there's no substance there, and they never provide any substance. What's the proof of WMDs in Iraq? You know, what's the proof of this? Um, and again, you guys, it's not. I'm not saying Putin's above a false flag, but like both sides now have basically cried false. Cried the other side's gonna gonna engage in a false flag. Well, how how muddy does that make it when when something actually happens here? Right? You see how convenient that is for people who want fucking war here. And we covered, uh, I think it was last week, it might have been the week before, that, that military contractors, weapons manufacturers are openly bragging about the prospects for them that might come out of this. And that from the ongoing genocide in Yemen and all these conflicts in the Middle East, etc. They were bragging about, oh, our prospects are great. Look at all this war. So, you know, it, it's the United States is acting like some sort of innocent bystander here who's just responding to Russian aggression. And, you know, if you fall for that, I got a fucking bridge in Brooklyn to sell you because the United States has been an aggressor against virtually everyone, uh, including Russia. So and again, that's not to say, you guys, I feel like I always have to give this caveat when I talk foreign policy. That's not to say that any other particular actor is a good guy, but we clearly are not good guys ourselves. And we're going to get into another number of other foreign policy issues here today as well. Uh, but I wanted to cover Ned's absolutely humiliating press conference, expecting the press to just take him at his word when it's their very job, you guys, to push back on the powerful like him. And and the Biden administration also wants to pretend that they're all about this robust free press while they prosecute Julian Assange and while they treat reporters like this. Like, what, you want fucking proof? You're not just going to take our word for it? It's unbelievable their their hypocrisy, you know, and 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 how they're in this elite bubble where they actually think it's reasonable to consider themselves a free press administration and act this way. Um, so shame on Ned Price and what a fantastic job from Matt Lee. I wish more journalists would do that, you guys, but they don't because they fear losing access to the powerful that that are their ticket to to a nice income, right, and to having a platform. If they can't have access to these big names, then someone else is going to usurp them. Someone else is going to have that access and therefore take their viewership. So it's all this this profit game. It's all access journalism run amok. Uh, so good on Matt Lee for not doing the standard I'm going to play stenographer for the State Department bullshit uh, and actually pushing back on these obviously like treacherous claims about Russia uh, engaging in in propaganda here and a false flag and this kind of stuff. And again, you guys, third time I'm giving the caveat. I have no doubt. I don't put it above Putin to fuck it. Putin's not above this is what I mean. Um, so it's not that it's that show us the fucking proof. How many times do you get to make claims that that are proven to be verifiably false uh, without losing your credibility? Um, but they still expect us to treat them as though they have that credibility and it's outrageous. Um, so shame on Ned Price. And we'll continue to cover the uh, the U Ukraine situation going forward. And we'll see what comes of those negotiations with Emmanuel Macron tomorrow. Um, and we'll have an update for you, I presume, next week, because this is obviously a, a rather major story.